Um, hello there, my friends. Uh, my name is Carl Zipper. I run the Backwoods Engineering Programs here at Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation in Byram, New Jersey. I'm located on the former site of Mr. John Humphrey's Carpet Factory. Humphrey's, of course, being the noted um, carpet maker for Congress of the 1830s. Um, that said, however, moving on to something more contemporary, um, we're going to talk today about knots and lashings. Um, really on the cutting edge. And the lashing I want to talk with you about specifically is the diagonal lashing. Um, you know, you're not going to use it the majority of the time when you're building a project, but just about every project you build, um, you're going to need to include, you know, one or two of them in various places. So, with that said, um, let's get right into it. A lot of people have told me over the years, you know, that they believe the diagonal lashing is used when the lashings cross each other on any angle other than 90 degrees. Um, it's a common misconception. You know, those people are all wrong. Um, the, the correct time to use the diagonal lashing, and the reason this is correct is, you know, it has to do with how the ropes um, wrap around the spars, you know, and how they best absorb the force. Um, the correct time to use the diagonal lashing is when you have two spars that cross each other. Um, they can cross at any angle you want, 90 degrees, 70 degrees, um, pick a number. So whenever they cross at any angle, just about, and either there's a gap in between them that you have to pull closed, or even if there's no gap, sometimes you're working in a situation where you know that once you put load on the project, um, the forces in the project are going to want to want to pop those spars away from each other, um, like this. Either of those situations is the correct time to use the diagonal lashing. Um, so, how do we tie it? Um, you start out by making a knot called the timber hitch. Um, and that, that timber hitch is going to go around both of these spars. Um, the timber hitch is a knot that works really well for this because as you pull it tight, you know, it's already going to be cinching these two, these two spars together. And um, you can pull it really, really hard and it's still going to be easy to untie when it's time to take this lashing apart. So to make the timber hitch, what we do is we have our working end of our rope and we have the standing end that we're not going to be um, manipulating to tie the knot. We take our working end and we wrap it around the standing end to form a little loop that the standing end can slide back and forth through. Um, then we take our working end and to, to secure this loop so that it doesn't pop apart when I take my fingers off it, um, you know, we wrap around a couple times here, wrap the working end back around on itself to, um, to lock that loop. Now, once we, um, once we pull this tight and once those, those twists are bearing against the spars, it won't come undone. Um, but it's the friction, you know, between the twists and the wood that keeps the, the hitch together. So as soon as we take tension off of this thing, you know, it'll be very easy to untie again. So I'm gonna cinch up that timber hitch, get it right on top here of the lashing. And then we're gonna be ready to start our wrapping turns. Um, the wrapping turns are the part of the lashing that holds the two spars together. Um, I'm going to start out by wrapping around, just sort of like in a big circle, um, three times, and I'm going to do the perpendicular to um, the timber hitch that I just made. Some people start out, they, they wrap parallel to the timber hitch, and um, if it works for you, that's fine. I, I prefer to do it this way because the timber hitch doesn't move around quite so much as I'm putting in these first couple wraps. Um, I'm going to do this three times. So that was the first one, this is the second one. And this is the third one. Um, I'm just keeping everything, you know, nice and close together. I don't want to see any sort of air space in between here, um, any, any visible gaps. And I also don't want to, um, don't want to have these really crossing over each other. I want them to lay nice and parallel. So there we go. I did three wraps um, perpendicular to where I have my timber hitch. Now I'm going to do three more wraps. I'm going to come around um, parallel to the timber hitch. Ah. And this is where the, um, the name of the lashing comes from, the diagonal lashing, because <sighs> these, um, these wraps, they cross each other diagonally right up on the top of the lashing. Oop. Now let's get that sat down against itself a little bit better there. There we go. One, two, and I believe, yep, that's number three. All right. So I've done my timber hitch around both spars. 
I've done my first set of three wraps perpendicular to the timber hitch. I've done my second set of three wraps um, parallel to the timber hitch. Now what I have to do is I have to put my frappings um, on the lashing. The frappings are um, where you wrap the rope around those wrapping turns, but not around the spars so much, and they're gonna pull the wraps tight. I'm gonna do two of those. Um, I've seen a lot of people over the years who do more on their lashings, but any more is just wasted effort. Two good frapping turns will get the lashing as tight as, it, as it's gonna be. Um, all right. So that's my first one. I'm pulling it nice and tight. Here is my second one. And again, I'm pulling it nice and tight. I like to, um, I like to pull my fraps every time they sort of go around a corner here. I like to give them a good pull. Um, it's pretty hard to have a lashing that's too tight. So, you know, you don't, you don't lose anything, you know, by pulling harder. Um, unless the rope breaks, but then you found out that you didn't have a very good rope. So that's, that's good too. Um, all right, so now that I've got my two frapping turns in here, um, the only thing I have to do is I have to tie off the end of the rope to secure the lashing. Um, I'm gonna tie that off by making a clove hitch. Um, you know, it doesn't make any, any strength difference, you know, in the lashing. Um, it doesn't change the, the strength or its carrying capacity at all, depending on, on where you put it. You could put it any of these places. I'm gonna put it right here because that's sort of where the rope seems like it wants to go. Um, now, when you make this clove hitch at the end, um, it's really important that the clove hitch be right up against um, the lashing. You don't want to have any, any visible space in between. And the easiest way to accomplish that is to make the clove hitch um, by tying a series of half hitches. Um, a half hitch is one of these sort of building blocks that you use when you're tying a lot of different knots. And to make it, you um, take your finger, you know, you hold the rope out away from the spar a little bit, and then you wrap it around behind the spar and you come up in between the spar and where you're holding the rope out. And that's a half hitch. Now I just said, you know, that I, I want to have the half hitch, or the clove hitch I should say, um, when I'm done, as close to the lashing as possible. And this is obviously very far away. But this is why I like to do the half hitches, is um, it's very easy to move this down close. All I got to do is give it a pull, it comes right in. And then I work it back and forth a little bit just to get it nice and tight. Um, now that's only a half hitch, you know, there's, there's no clove hitch here yet. Um, to make this half hitch into a clove hitch, I just have to do a half hitch again. Um, exact same thing, I can make it out here, you know, it doesn't really matter much because as soon as I pull that rope, it slips right down for me. Um, very convenient and I can work it back and forth. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera very well, but you can see right here, I have the, um, the clove hitch. You know, and it's, it's a clove hitch just like it would look, you know, any other way that you chose to tie it, any other method you use. And you can see that it's right against, you know, the frapping turns and the wraps, and there's, there's no, there's no air space in between, you know. Um, that's what we want to see. Any sort of gap in here, you know, could turn into a fatal problem for your lashing uh, once you start, you know, loading it up and putting it to use. Um, one last thing to do before the lashing is done, I have a little bit of extra rope here that's left over. Um, I don't want to leave this rope hanging down um, because it's a potential, you know, tripping or tangling hazard. I don't want to leave it hanging down because if it goes far enough that it's, it's touching the ground, that's bad for the rope ground contact. And also the lashing will look sloppy and unprofessional if we leave it hanging. Um, and you know, we just did all this work, so why not have it look good? Um, I'm gonna take the extra, I'm just gonna wrap it around a couple times. And when I'm out of rope to wrap around, I'll just take the end and I'll tuck it under here. And that's all we need. So that's the diagonal lashing. Uh, most important thing to remember about this, right, is start it with the timber hitch around both spars. And also remember when the right time to use it is. Um, I see a lot of people use the diagonal lashing, you know, in the wrong sort of circumstances. And whatever project they're working on when they do that, you know, they're, they're giving up strength, you know. Use the right lashing for the right job. And um, the diagonal lashing, remember, that's when the spars cross each other, but they either don't touch or um, the force in the project is gonna wanna pull them apart, of, apart from each other. Um, so, I think I've said what there is to say about the diagonal lashing. 
Um, I hope you learned a thing or two, you know, while I was saying it, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Um, people ask me, you know, they say, Carl, when do you use the diagonal lashing? And then before I can answer, you know, they, they tell me what they think. And um, they think, you know, a lot of times that you use the diagonal lashing when the spars cross on some sort of diagonal, you know, on an angle. So like this or, you know, like, like this. But, um, but any angle other than 90 degrees, basically. Those people are all wrong. Um, you know, that's what they get for... Um, for not listening to me, I guess. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm getting too eccentric. Let's um, let's start over. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no, I recently found in the old um, you know Congressional Register um, of you know 1830 whatever. You know, I found the um, found the financial records you know relating to their carpet, their purchases of Brussels carpet from Mr. Humphreys. Uh, yeah. Why were uh, you looking through the Congressional Financial Record of 1830? Oh, I mean, they, you know, there'd always been the tale, tale widely told, you know, that Humphreys sold some of the first carpet, you know, first Brussels carpet used in the United States Capitol. I wanted to see whether or not that was true. Was it specifically a Brussels carpet or was it just uh... I, I would have to look back in my, um, in my files to speak with authority, but I believe that they had carpet prior to Mr. Humphreys you know, sales to them, just not Brussels just, carpet. Just um, inferior. Yeah, no, Humphreys, I, I believe that he, you know, was the holder of the first American patent issued for some sort of system of carpeting. So you were specifically looking through the Congressional Financial Record of 1830. 1830 whatever. Huh? To find the entry about where they got their carpet from. I don't care where they got the rest of their carpet from. I just wanted to see if Humphreys had sold them any. Got it. Yeah. Okay. You know, the beauty of the modern age, Rich, is all this stuff has been digitized, you know, by um, Professor Google, you know, and made, made text searchable. <laughs> so it's not all that hard. Like, I didn't have to spend a lot of time on it. I think we've got our, our blooper <laughs> reel at the end now. Let's go back to the top and try this again. <laughs> hey, you're going to have to edit that a bit. It's going to be too long. I uh. don't know that I will. I think we're going to keep it all in there. It's just so good. Ha <laughs> ha.